The Danis stent is a self-expanding silicone-covered nitinol stent, which is indicated uh, for use in refractory esophageal variceal bleeds. The stent comes in one length only, that is 135 mm, with a body diameter of 25 mm, which flares out to 30 mm at either end. 2 mm of the flared portion of the stent is uncovered to reduce the risk of migration. In addition, the stent has a special braiding pattern which further reduces the risk of migration. The stent is deployed using a balloon-assisted mechanism, which means that fluoroscopy or endoscopic guidance is not necessary. The stent has alloy retrieval loops at either end, which facilitate removal of the stent within seven days of deployment. There is a dedicated extractor device available uh, for removing the stent, although a standard overtube can also be used. The stent is manufactured by LSCS in the Czech Republic and is distributed in the UK by its interventional. The stent costs £1,495 excluding VAT and the extractor costs a further £695 and these prices are correct as of June 2022. The Danis stent has an interesting history. It is named after Jan Danis, a gastroenterologist who worked in Linz, Austria. In November 2002, Danis used a covered chew stent to stop a severe variceal bleed in a 27-year-old man with haemophilia, hepatitis C and HIV. This patient had had a liver transplant three years earlier, but unfortunately the hepatitis C recurred and resulted in cirrhosis and development of varices. The true stent resulted in cessation of bleeding and was removed a few days later. Initially, this technique drew some criticisms from Dr. Danis's colleagues, but soon these criticisms were forgotten because the patient did so well. Danis then partnered up with Carol Volonek and Peter Kubina from LSCS, a company in the Czech Republic. The idea was to develop a removable stent which could be deployed in an emergency situation when there was refractory variceal bleeding. Using animal models, a covered removable stent was developed and initially had a polyurethane cover. In 2005, the stent received a CE mark and was classed as a 2B medical device. The first study was published in 2006 and comprised 20 patients. The study was published in Endoscopy and entitled The Use of Self-Expanding Metal Stents to Treat Acute Esophageal Variceal Bleeding. These initial results were encouraging. In addition to the stent, a special puppet called Daniela was developed to train doctors in the insertion of the Danish stent. In 2009, the covering of the stent was changed from polyurethane to silicone. The first presentation of the stent within a widely accepted guideline occurred in 2010 at the Bovino 5 consensus meeting in Italy. In the 2015 Bovino 7 consensus meeting, it was stated that self-expanding metal stents may be as effective and safer than balloon tamponade in refractory esophageal variceal bleeding. The most recent CE certification for the Dennis stent occurred in 2017 and in March of 2022, the Dennis stent received nice recommendation in the United Kingdom for use in refractory variceal bleeding and also in the palliative setting. Sadly, Dr. Dennis passed away in 2010 following a freak aircraft accident. The nice recommendations were released in March 2022. The three main recommendations were as follows. Firstly, evidence supports the case for adopting Danis stent for treating acute esophageal variceal bleeding. The Danis stent improves the short-term control of bleeding compared with balloon tamponade and can be left in place for longer, allowing time for stabilization. The second recommendation was Danis stent should be considered for people aged 16 and over with acute esophageal variceal bleeding that does not respond to endoluminal therapy and whose esophageal varices are being considered for definitive treatment. Also, the Danis stent should be considered for people when definitive treatment is not appropriate and if they are likely to be offered palliative care. The third recommendation was 
cost modelling showed that Dennis Dent is cost-saving compared with balloon tamponade for acute esophageal variceal bleeding being considered for definitive treatment. This is because having Dennis Dent results in a shorter stay in intensive care. To be cost-saving, the stent needs to decrease intensive care stay by approximately one day or more compared with balloon tamponade. The evidence for the NICE recommendations come from nine studies published between 2008 and 2019. These studies comprise one randomized controlled trial, one retrospective case control study, three prospective case series, and seven retrospective case series. Two of the nine studies were comparative. One of these studies compared Dennis stent with Sengstarkin balloon tamponade. The other comparative study compared Dennis stent with either repeat endotherapy together with vasoactive drugs or Sengstarkin or a combination. Although the nine studies were rather heterogeneous, attempts were made to synthesize the evidence. Immediate bleeding control was achieved in 88% of patients from seven retrospective studies. The Dennis stent was successfully inserted in 93% of patients and 68% survived for 30 days. However, we should interpret uh, these data with caution due to the low quality of the included studies. The remainder of this video shows an ex vivo demonstration of the insertion of a Dennis stent and comes from the endoscopy village at the BSG 2022 in Birmingham. Hello everyone, uh, Neil Ramad here from the BSP Endoscopy Village. Uh, I'm on the Barrisil Bleeding Station. And today I'm joined by Richard Fern and we will show you a demonstration of how to use the Dennis um, stent. So we're talking about the Dennis stent which is used for uncontrollable acute esophageal bleeds. Uh, the Dennis stent itself is a 30mm diameter stent, 135mm long. It's designed with a variable weave pattern which is designed to try and combat peristalsis. It has a 2mm uncovered section at either end which is designed to pr promote a, a temporary tissue anchor to try and combat migration. The Dennis delivery system, it comes preloaded in the delivery system. It's designed for rapid, unguided deployment, so it doesn't require endoscopic or radiological guidance. If you can determine through scoping your patient that it's an esophageal bleed and you determine that Danis is the right course of action, you're going to effectively go straight to this. So when you scope your patient, take a rough measurement between your GOJ and your mouth guard using the scope. Whatever that comes in at, so for instance if it's 40 centimetres, we're going to add 5 centimetres and we're going to position this plate appropriately. There's actually a five centimeter depth markers on the delivery system. So we'll add five centimeters and position this at 45. And then whilst we've got the scope in place, we're going to uh, place a guide wire down through the scope. Uh, this comes with a guide wire, so pop it down the working channel of the scope, do a standard exchange, remove your scope, leave the guide wire in place, and then this is going to be positioned over the guide wire you don't have to be precise with this, we're just going to want to get plenty of delivery system in the stomach. So we're going to pass this through until the yellow plate touches the mouth guard. And we're looking for roughly five centimetres of delivery system in the stomach. And then these clips are actually numbered one, remove, and number two. So we're going to do exactly what the, what the system tells us to do. We're going to remove clip number one, and then we need to deploy a balloon in the stomach. So what I'm going to do is advance clip number two to where clip number one was and a good way of remembering this is just two to one. Think of the phrase two to one. So I'm just going to advance clip number two to that position. You can see we've deployed a balloon in the stomach and then we're going to inflate that balloon. The delivery system comes with the balloon valve pre-attached straight out of the pack. So the syringe attaches to this one-way balloon valve. You do not need to prime your syringe because it's a one-way valve and I'm going to inflate it with 120 mils of air, so two times 60 mils. That noise is normal. And you can see the balloon is inflating in the stomach. And then, a way to make this easy for yourself is orientate your hands in the right, right way. So, 
that's the difference between this feeling awkward or feeling smooth. So with my right hand, because my position to the patient is on this side of the patient, I'm going to use my right hand to grip this white collar with my thumb finger, and with my left hand I'm just going to pull the whole system back until the balloon is occluding the GOJ. And then this is a critical aspect, and this is what makes Danis rapid and simple. I'm holding significant tension there, so I want this to feel as though there's tension in the system. I don't want it to relax because the balloon can inadvertently fall away from the GOJ. We don't want that to happen. So I'm holding the tension with my right hand and I, I want to hold that tension at all times. Notice I've got a free hand here. So with my free hand, I'm now going to remove clip number two, still holding this tension, and I'm now going to deploy the stent. So I'm going to pull the sheath backwards to deploy the stent. And I'm going to do that by just gripping this hook pulling that hook backwards, I'm still maintaining that tension and I'm going to pull this backwards until I feel a click. That click is the stent deploying. At this point I can remove the syringe and one-way valve. I'm going to wait five seconds for the balloon to deflate and then I can remove the delivery system and the stent is deployed.